the Great Northern Sex Cast is 40 today, you guys. Yay! Yay! 40 and fabulous. It's, a, it's episode 40. <laughs> Colleen Bertino, Megan Vaughn, welcome. Hey, thank you. How Good morning, everyone. Well, I just have to I have to tell everybody what just happened because we're all still giggling in the room. Mm -hmm. um, at, we always start the show laughing our butts off, it seems like. But today... Um, only I could actually laugh my ass off. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, you know, one of the, uh, speaking of that, <laughs> one of the funniest Facebook posts I think I've seen over the summer was, if wouldn't it be great if mosquitoes sucked fat instead of blood? <laughs> oh, I mean, like, that would be the <laughs> ultimate genetically engineered thing that I would get right behind. Yep. Wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so yeah, so no, um, we uh, had a little technical thing going on. Couldn't figure out the um, why we couldn't hear anything in our headsets. And then I flipped a switch and literally, Colleen, the headphones went flying off. And uh, tore them off because I'm yeah. like, that was startling. And I'm like, <laughs> it was loud and startling. I said, I don't need it to stay loud and startling on my ears. No, <laughs> no there's nothing worse than those electronic things yeah. that, that go bonging in your head. And it's like, oh my God. Uh, the technology is good until it's not good. Exactly. A lot, like the other day, I noticed on my little lovely little armor phone app that someone had set a store at stay, which means that the next person to open the door, the alarm was going to go off immediately. Oh my. And it was nice to have technology because four pokes later, which is just fun to say in general, <laughs> um, I could turn the alarm off. And then I could alarm it correctly so that the next, you know, and I just wouldn't have known that uh, until the next morning when I got a call from the alarm company saying the alarm's going off and my poor employee was having a heart attack oh, yeah. because you don't expect the, you know, there's, you know, there's a delay. I mean, anyone, but it was just like, this is when technology works. Whereas the other week it wasn't working. <laughs> and poor Megan's running around the office with it blaring at her and she's calling <laughs> oh, me and we're waiting and nothing's happening. And then like two hours later, it decides to work and send me like, you know, what, a dozen emails yeah, right then. Once. So, you know, it's it just, you know, stuff. Alarms are a bugger. I think that they, I mean, I, I, they're, they're great when they, when they're doing what they're supposed to be doing and I understand the need for them, but I mean, I don't know anybody that has one in their life that doesn't have issues. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Seriously. Mm -hmm. Do you? The worst is like a spider or something will set off a motion sensor in the store and I'm like, I'm at my house in Bloomington. It's the middle of the night. I'm driving all the way to Coon Rapids because their alarm went off to find out it's a flipping spider walking across you, the motion sensor. And the problem sensor. is, it's just a big ass spider too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it gets inside the little detector and you're like, Oh. So we've learned, you know, and you know that if it's, you know, if certain ones are going off, what the deal is and what's going on. But sometimes I'm like, oh, I'm just not sure, and we have to send someone out, and it's just, oh, it used to be very entertaining uh, when, uh, oh, my daughter was very small, so I'd be showing up in the middle of the night with a toddler attached to me, oh. and go, you know, until I could get someone else that didn't have a toddler to show up. Sure. <laughs> well, don't you guys have remote? Can't you uh, see your cameras remotely? In your stores, we have we. Uh, I've, I've I'm looking at systems, but uh, currently I just uh, uh, you know glass breaks and and uh, doors alarms and windows are alarmed and you know every you know there isn't anything that doesn't you know you know the big air molecule sometimes sets you know stuff off. Yeah, but mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that that my uh, my boyfriend's store he has the security cameras and we can access it from a computer anywhere mm -hmm. you know and I love that because we yeah, can check nice. in on people and and. and, and I love picking up the phone and going, um, wow, so how's that mopping going? Or, mm -hmm. you know, uh, so how's Facebook? Or, <laughs> you know, whatever, when there's stuff that's supposed no, to be No, I've, I've got video, but it's not, not, not real time. But it's just, uh, it, it's fascinating sometimes we're going through there because you can see. Yeah, like, that's like the time we saw someone pull up to the outside of our Coon Rapids store um, in her Lexus and take my potted plants, put them in her trunk, and drive away. And it was just... <laughs> enough out of camera range that I could that I couldn't see the license plate but I could see that it was a Lexus and I'm like you what bitch a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with people I, I just I was like, I was like watch this. It was like everyone's well, like, because we, we spent what a good half of the day thinking somehow we watched it enough. We were going to be able to figure out what the license plate number was. <laughs> <laughs> it just never happened. It's so frustrating. I mean, I was just uh, talking to my mom on the way into the show today. And um, that was interesting. Did you hear that? Nope. 
Okay, maybe it's just You're in here. my own head. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's try to be fun. We'll see what else you yeah, hear today. Yeah, exactly. No, um, but, you know, I sit on the board of my homeowners association for um, a loft that I own downtown. Mm -hmm. And I was telling her, I said, Mom, you know, if you ever want to find out how weird and stupid people are, sit on the homeowners association board once. And what cracks me up is these people that either, both the renters are, are high quality renters because it's an expense, you know, it's expensive mm -hmm. to rent there. And then the owners could afford to buy these, right? Mm -hmm. And the stuff that goes on, I'm like, are we in second grade? And, you know, chasing down, you know, the videos and stuff like that. I mean, mm -hmm. we had one guy let his friend in and run through, and he literally vandalized the property. We had, you know, I mean, like turned upside, major pots, this is what made me think of it, mm -hmm. outside the front, upside down. And like, you know, $600 worth of flowers later, it's like, what oh, is wow. wrong with people? I you know? know? It's weird. Retail's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, de definitely a joy. But you know what? It's, like I said, I could, yeah, I, I use this example all the time. If I owned a tree company, when you are a roofing company, generally people call you, you know, if you like the trees landed on your roof, right. <laughs> no one's happy. Right. No, <laughs> nobody's happy about this. But in retail for the generally folks, should, you know, they, they come in because they want or need something. And it's not, you know, it, it, you know, I'm certainly not going to, you know, have uh, Warren Buffett money at any time in my life. But I'm going <laughs> to. But I'm, you know, going to make a living. And sure. I look at I feel really bad for the people that aren't happy. That would happen is sometimes when I used to work out at the stores and mm -hmm. someone would come in and I'd do our thing that you can always expect from fantasy gifts. I'd greet them, say, hi, how's it going today? And they'd be like, well, obviously not very good. I'm here, aren't I? And they'd be they'd just come in pissed whoa, about whoa, whoa, something. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Why? Okay. If they're th why would it be a bad day if you're at Fantasy Gifts? The, it makes I, no sense to me. It is hard to imagine. I can only imagine that perhaps they they were um, the recipient of a conversation where you know things aren't quite doing it for me. Oh, you know what I mean? And the guy is feeling like, oh, I'm in here because my wife will get off. I'm not good enough. Blah, blah, blah. And oh. and not seeing it where hey, if your wife wants to use toys with you that's not bad that's fucking awesome mm -hmm. <laughs> you're looking at this all wrong buddy <laughs> but i always feel a little awkward when i get those guys in oh, or okay. women I'm, I'm sometimes cool, yeah. and, 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 you know it's it's not all you know not all happiness but for the most part yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you guys are selling fun, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is what my boyfriend sells, booze. People exactly. are, are mostly, except for the severely depressed ones that you mm -hmm. really feel unethical about selling booze to, there's <laughs> like, those. Like, huh. oh, yeah. yeah, but no, I mean, it's the, yeah, people are in a pretty good mood. So, well, speaking of the stores, guys, mm -hmm. um, what's what's going on around uh, Fantasy Gifts? I know you guys have been pretty dang busy, I've been hearing. Well, we've got uh, we got a couple of uh, uh, merchandise coming in, got some special deals on this cute little corset purse. We'll have to snap picture of that and put oh, it on the site for sure. uh we're finalizing everything for the redo with the crystal store um oh. monday october 5th and tuesday october 6th that store will not be open okay uh because we need to re-slat wallet oh wow and uh and that just you you couldn't fix it it was time to redo it and it was it, the day before we opened the store 20 plus years ago our neighbors had a fire and there was oh. some smoke damage, a little water damage. So, you know, and then, you know, then there was like a several year fight with the city with Crystal. So I never, you know, I never felt comfortable shutting the store down <laughs> to fix it. Mm. But, you know, and we got by. So no, a little, little, up, uh, little upgrade there. Uh, we've, um, you know, stuff like that. There is oh. an exciting new product I wanted to mention. Ooh, which one? Which one? So the, everyone knows, I think the Hitachi Magic Wand has been around for what, seven Oh, since the 70s, 70s so like 30 yeah. plus years oh yeah yeah they finally had an upgrade we now have the classic hitachi wand and though now it's just called the magic wand they uh, the hitachi company sold off the, okay uh, the patent or whatever but it is rechargeable with four functions Really? So, so, no, so this, no cords. Yes. This is the first time this thing has changed in over 30 years. So I'm like, that's kind of a big darn deal. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so we got that all. Those should all have gone out to the stores um, last week, actually. Mm -hmm. So so and you believe that this is a good one? Oh, oh the, yeah. yeah. This is What's a the price point, classic. Then? Um, they were, let's see, it's 
a little over a hundred, I believe. The original was about seventy four, and I think they're about fifty dollars more okay. um, for the rechargeable. Okay, I'm coming in. Mm-hmm. I, I, yeah, it's time to replace everybody. I mean, at it's my been house. around for thirty years for a reason. I mean, these yeah. things are so darn strong, and now you get all that power. With like pulsation functions, <laughs> I wish people could see Megan's face because her eyes are like saucers right now. She's it's so funny. Kid at Christmas, like She's this is happy. amazing. <laughs> oh yeah, and we oh we uh, and uh, Liz has been uh, ordering a few Christmas items, and uh, one of them is a uh, novelty. I, I don't even know what to call it, um, or I'm going to call it penis covering because it looks <laughs> like a little tiny. Or big, depending on anyone who but um, a Santa hat, but it's attached to it's 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 there's no back to it. It's all it's like a, a wire U that's on so that you it's sort of like a headband for your crotch, but with a, but you put your penis in a little hat. Oh God! And we just looked at that <laughs> and I said, Oh, we have to get that because you know a big box store is not carrying this. I mean, this is an absolute classic fantasy gifts product, oh and so God. those suckers are coming in for the for the holidays. But we've got. Uh, um, the costumes uh, on sale at the Crystal Store. Mm-hmm. We've got um, accessories and, and fun stuff at all the other stores. The eyelashes, the gloves, the, uh, the oh, hosiery. We have really exciting hosiery. We've got um, a lot of like fishnet where it's spider webbed. Oh, um, cute. We've got skull Love the spidery stuff. Um, skull bows and like where it's bones for your arm arm warmer and oh. leg warmer and then my favorite because I am I, oh this is I oh. love Halloween and I'm really gory <laughs> and I love all that stuff. We have thigh highs that um, they clip to a garter belt, but then there's a latex wound, so it looks like the garter <laughs> belt is actually ripping up your skin. Oh my god! So yeah, these, perfect yeah. for zombie pub crawl or Halloween. Crypticon. Oh. Crypticon. Because we will have a uh, we have a room there. Oh. So for folks that are uh, going to that convention stuff like that, it's been we've this is about third year. Yes, third yeah. year. When third is, year. do you know the dates, Meg, for the zombie pub crawl and the Crypticon? Crypticon is the um, weekend before Halloween. Okay. So I want to, it's, it's um, yes. Okay. So it is Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I want to say the 24th, 5th, 6th, possibly 3rd, 4th, 5th. That sounds, you know. yeah, that sounds yeah. familiar. Okay. Um, the, right, the weekend right before Halloween. Okay. So, and, and so, I'm so excited. Yeah, and zombie <laughs> pub crawl is always just, uh, do you want to talk about hilarious at the liquor store? Oh, I bet. My God. Oh, they all come in. It's just, uh, and I love working that. I mean, mm-hmm. it is just, it's more, you can't have more fun. I could, I could be out and not be having as much fun as I am working the time. I would probably rather work. I can't, I've never done, I did one zombie pub crawl, the one in St. Paul for a bachelorette party. That was a lot of fun. Yep. But I don't do it because I don't like big crowds. Yeah. Um, I don't, that many drunk people yeah. is not my idea of a good time. And I'm kind of a snob and I'm just like, posers, you probably couldn't even name three zombie movies. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I admit, I'm also a yeah. snob. <laughs> okay, looking at the official calendar. A zombie yeah. snob. Who knew? Yeah. Look, oh, looking at the calendar. Okay. Uh, anyway, it's 23rd, 24th, 25th. Awesome. Mm-hmm. awesome. Sounds good. Guys, before we dive in, um, I we've got a... Uh-oh. I, <laughs> Oh, we're right. launching crap all over the place God, here. It's, I, I think I've had a little too much caffeine today. Mm-hmm. So, guys, um, DraftKings has been out there. And, man, are, are they, like, everywhere you look right now? Mm-hmm. Holy crap. Um, but f- football season's just started, and it already feels like the playoffs at DraftKings.com. This is America's favorite one-week fantasy football site where millionaires are being crowned all season long. So one-week fantasy at DraftKings means there's no season-long commitments, which is really kind of pretty cool. When I used to work in sports, at that time they didn't have this, so this is really cool. Um, this is fantasy football on demand, and play where you want, when you want, with the players that you want, and then with a million bucks up for grab every single week. Ooh, money. Yeah. Every game is the big game, and every single play matters. So first and ten in the first quarter feels like fourth and goal with one second left. Um, if this turns your crank, absolutely. And a long touchdown run can mean more than just a victory for your favorite team. It could mean you've just turned your love of football into a million-dollar payday. Thank you very much. So this is not fantasy as usual. This is DraftKings. Welcome to the big time. So hurry to DraftKings.com now and use promo code SPREAKER 
to play for a free shot at a million dollars in this week's Millionaire Maker event. So enter Spreaker for free entry now only at DraftKings.com. That's DraftKings.com, guys. Yeah, I always awesome. like that fantasy, uh, you know, fantasy gifts, fantasy football, yeah. fantasy games, fantasy role playing. We actually, I, I always like the fantasy. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to go with fantasies. Yeah, Coon Rapid store for sure, and I believe as li- online as well. We have a sexy fantasy football player outfit. Mm-hmm. Do you really? So take your winner- winnings from DraftKings, mm-hmm. get your gal mm-hmm. <laughs> the football player or cheerleader well, outfit, and we also have the football shaped <laughs> masturbator. Yes, the mm-hmm. football you do. Yeah, it's a little football. You take off the end, and you, yeah, you can screw mm-hmm. the football. And a booby football. And a, oh, so oh, yeah. if Lots you need to toss things. toss some balls around while mm-hmm. making your no draft idea. decisions, oh, yeah. <laughs> that you had sport themed things. <laughs> well, we need. We wanted to find you know stuff for like a bachelor party yeah. as well, and it's yeah. kind of hard to do. So we're like, that's got a boob on it. It's like Portlandia, you know, put a burn on it. We're like, all right, <laughs> they put a boob on, on it. it. <laughs> we're gonna buy it. <laughs> <laughs> it is like that because. I have spent the longest time going, I mean, they, they make everything pink. They do all this penis stuff. And I'm like, well, that's handy. But, you know, what about the guys? Because there were some guys that want that. And what about, you know, same-sex couples? Not everything has to be female, heterosexual, bachelorette right. order. But it's, it's, the, the industry is a little bit slower getting to the thing. So it really, if you can put a boob on it, we're like, yeah, it's a boob frisbee. Do we, do we still have those in? We do, I believe. Okay. Oh, God, that'd be funny. Yes. I want mm-hmm. one of those. Mm-hmm. Throw for the dogs. That's mm-hmm. hysterical. <laughs> for Colleen, what we need to find is some sort of booby googly eyes <laughs> and then I think you would be in heaven <laughs> um, so back up to the football masturbator for just one second um, it, like how how big is it like uh, it runs probably about seven inches from point to point okay it's a you know smaller maybe like Tom Brady size football. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want deflate game here. No. No. I made a sports joke. <laughs> um, oh, that's funny stuff, actually. Um, mm-hmm. So, no, so how much are those approximately? Do we know? Oh, are we going to well, under know, 20? Yeah, yeah. Oh, 12, so not no, no, yeah. Oh, okay. I would say, Maybe, or, yeah. It's not that. We can put, you know, we can put a link to it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, we've got to put that up because, I mean, I think I need to buy one of those for every guy friend I have. That's yeah, like the new present. Yeah, because it used to be, you know, we have a few booby fishing lures, a few a boob inspector badge. And, you know, I mean, it depends. Yeah, you because know, that one can go, you know, either way. <laughs> uh, but, it, you know, but I'm like, we have to get the booby frisbee and the booby football. <laughs> <laughs> or the math food mat, you know, it's, it's just fun stuff. I'm a little disappointed that Michael isn't here to hear this live today because yeah. there's... Oh, yeah. Oh, what? Does Don't feel bad for him. No, 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 He's no, on no, a no. cruise. He's on a cruise. Oh. Yeah, I was about to say, I, <laughs> no uh, I know that. For no, no. Oh. <laughs> they, they're on their, uh, him, him and his husband are on their uh, annual cruise, sort of celebrating oh. their uh, their uh, ship matrimony. That, but they, they love, they love, they love a cruise. That's perfect. Mm-hmm. That's perfect. So yeah, don't no, don't feel bad at all. No, so we, had, we just had to, you know, no, no feeling. Okay, mm-hmm. all right. Well, he was here when we did the story about Dick Gasso, which was the guy that did the paintings with his penis, mm-hmm. and um, the the still photographs of this guy working were just well, he has quite the bod. I mean, <laughs> I'm I'm not kidding. Well, now we've got the guy with the world's longest tongue, and he goes by Licasso. <laughs> And he paints with his tongue. Okay, okay, Colleen, are you, did, that was a snort. A snort. Yeah. Are you all right? <laughs> okay, just, <laughs> just checking. Just checking. A sip of coffee and then just and I'll giggle. And then a giggle. That, that was oh, a bad combination. That hurts. I hate that. The worst <laughs> is milk. Excuse me, everyone over there, because no. I know that's not the most pleasant sound. But that's what that was. That was definite nose, nose noise. Mm-hmm. Um, no, so this guy um, paints with his tongue, and the pictures, it's like, whoa. I mean, it's 3.97 inches from tip to closed lip. Think about that. 3.97. Guys. Holy crap. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know. And the pictures of it are, and then there's a girl. She's like a runner up. She's frightening. She is just frightening. She's got it, it. It hangs below her chin. I mean, it's like, okay. But anyway, he paints and his favorite thing to paint. Just, just take a stab. I'm assuming it's not pretty little birdies. We're well, not going to, we're not going to make bird, bird out of it or a tree. Like, like the he, one guy with the fuzzy hair. <laughs> he likes to paint beavers, <laughs> but I'm talking like yeah. the kind with the two front teeth that eats trees, and and he's not good. Uh, Dick mm. Osso is very talented at his. This guy is terrible, but it's just so hysterically funny to look at to watch him do this with that freakish thing hanging out of his mouth. <laughs> the beavers look like something in a bad animated 
cartoon. <laughs> Bad. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Oh. oh, with that long of a tongue, you think it would be a little better at making beavers. <laughs> right? At least making beavers happy. happy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I knew it. Where's it? Yeah. Megan, you are just terrible. Where's it? Um, so yeah, so he, he's a beaver dude. And then, um, so next up, this is, this is interesting, but it's, it's a little bit more of a serious news story than what we usually talk about. Did you guys, um, hear about the topless protesters that are, that are popping up all over Europe to, um, they, they're targeting Muslim groups primarily and the oppression of, of women. Um, and this is a group that started in, um, in, uh, the Ukraine, I believe. Yeah. Ukraine founded, um, and they, uh, they show up and they come out of the, you know, kind of nowhere and they will literally go on stage. And this just happened over the weekend in Paris, two topless female activists stormed the stage of a Muslim conference and the pictures, um, they, they have written on themselves. Nobody makes me submit. And they also wrote, and this one really scares me for, for their safety. I am my own prophet. It's like you go anywhere near the prophet in mm-hmm. a place like that, and you have like a target on your head like you would not believe. Mm-hmm. But, um, and the video has gone viral. Um, and uh, they're trying to, um, I don't entirely know, because I, if we can't deal with terrorism the way that we've been, you know, in all the different ways that we have, I don't know if boobs are going to do it. I, I'm just saying. <laughs> well, I, 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 I understand. Understand what they're trying to do, but I can't imagine that this is going to make any <laughs> any difference whatsoever. Because I mean, there is there is still plenty of folks that um, dress modestly for religious reasons for in, in in almost all religions. Right. I mean, I mean, I, I don't particularly think they're storming Amish uh, gatherings and showing their boobs. So this tends to yeah. Well, Amish, mm. it's the same. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like both men and women. women. I think yeah. they're. Yeah, but I'm saying they could do that. But and then there's, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I, and it, 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 you know, it's a big thing, and it's not, you know, going to change, you know, change anytime, you know, soon. But you know, in in you know, most Western world, you know, 200 years ago, it wasn't that much different. Yeah. So people will, just, you know, for, there's always setbacks, but the world tends to go forward. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, you know, plateaus and and stuff like that. But I just, I, you know, I, I would say. Their hearts are in their, their hearts in the right place, and their boobs maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> that is so well put. And I'll just I'll uh, wrap this item up mm-hmm. with with telling you that um, they chose the moment that they chose to storm the stage was uh, during a discussion on whether or not wives should be beaten. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's when they decided to go ahead and let the the girls out. Yeah, yeah. I see. I think that drawing attention to it is extremely important. And, oh yeah. And but uh, this. The downside is this is not going to change people's minds. Mm-hmm. If there was someone in the audience who felt wives should be beaten, mm-hmm. seeing women run on stage topless, it's not going to help. Oh, suddenly I understand yeah. that you have rights as a human being while showing me, <laughs> you know what? Right. Oh, for sure. But here's the, here's the thing, and I got to give him credit for this. We're talking about it. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's, you know, getting people yep. to, to realize, oh my God, they actually really do. In, certain sectors of that of, of the world and mm-hmm. that religion you know that still goes on and i mean it's it, you know the law and order just i love law okay i'll admit it i'm just <laughs> i'm addicted to every single one of them okay but um they had a an episode and it's a it was a rerun but i caught it um one day and it was really an amazing testament it was dealing with some bosnian um muslims and the girl had been raped and um he it, her brother threw her out of the house i mean and it's like but it was an extremely powerful episode because they dealt with like so many different mm-hmm. things and the brother beat up the DA for trying to prosecute the rapist because now everybody knew his sister got raped and he's embarrassed. It's like, really? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it's no, a- the, the women themselves are in, in most places are going to be the ones that affect the most change. And then the, and then the, you know, the folk, and then the uh, men that, you know, believe in them, you know, th- that they need to be equal. Um, there are, I mean, a, a lot of the reasons there used to be, um, I mean, there was, a, you know, there used to be a lot of uh, uh, just, you know, men only schools and clubs. And then as folks get older, the fathers realize that they want their daughters to have the same opportunities as their sons. And they're the ones that said, you know, you're not getting any more money until I'm not donating anymore until you do this. And it, you know, it's, it's frustrating to have, you know, to have all that, you know, um, uh, it just, and they can maybe, you know, affect a, you know, a little bit more change, but you know, more than likely storming the, uh, 
uh, uh, storming the guys wasn't going to change anything. So it probably should have stormed a women's gathering somewhere to let them know that they've got allies. Yeah. That's you yeah. Know, to where they could say, no, I'm not going to do this anymore. Or, you know, or let the, or let folks know that there are places that they can go for shelter or that they have, um, you know, options. But a lot of times, uh, if you're an immigrant in a lot of d- different places here, other countries and stuff like that, you don't have, um, you don't have citizenship or you don't have the same, um, you may not even, you know, you don't have the paperwork to establish yourselves. And so they're feeling, you know, feeling trapped. So I say, uh, give resources to the women and they'll figure it out. Women are resourceful. I will, mm-hmm. I will admit that. Did you guys, did you guys catch the story about the diamond thief in Thailand yesterday? This woman was at... Okay, so I, whenever I hear the word thief, I'm just wondering where they put stuff. Well, that, you, then you know where I'm going with it. <laughs> so she swallowed a $300,000, uh, what was it, six carat diamond, I think? Yeah. And um, <laughs> the laxatives and other methods did not work. Um, and so um, they uh, had to go in with, uh, you know... A, tools okay to get this thing out and i saw the picture of the diamond presumably after it had been cleaned up um and uh it's un- absolutely unbelievable but they said that she was not going to be able to pass that thing it was going to tear up her intestines completely and it was hanging out in her large intestine and they went in after it now she goes to jail after you know obviously but um did- well, well okay so she she, she like shopping in a store for it was it a it was ring a, it was an individual it was stone it, it was a loose stone and it was um it was at a jewelry fair, so like a trade oh, okay. show type thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, and she just, you know, went in there. And I, I did not remember this story. Do you remember in 2012, South African police arrested a 25-year-old man who swallowed 220 polished diamonds? 220. Oh, wow. And they... No, they I mean, those things are... Those suckers are sharp. They're diamonds. Right? I don't... Under, okay. No, no, I had not... I, I don't remember that. I mean, I, you would have thought that would have made news of the weird or something, right? But guess how they, they spotted it. He walked through the body scan getting on the plane. He was trying to smuggle them, and they showed up. Oh. 220. <laughs> my God. I mean, I've had some rough days in the bathroom in my life. I think we all have, <laughs> but I can't even imagine what was going on with that. Yeah, I don't get why that lady in Thailand just didn't put up her, put it up her vagina like a normal mm-hmm. person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's certainly smaller than a ham or a handgun. I mean, I recently saw that someone shoved a loaded hand, you know, small handgun in her vagina. And I'm thinking, it was loaded. Maybe she was hoping it was shooting blanks. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> gonna, that's it. You're going to Megan, everybody, she'll be here all, she'll be here Try all the week. veal, folks. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh my God! You and my brother with the with the puns. I'm telling you right now. I'm kind of known for that. Well, I was gonna say oh. known for that in the office, and maybe hated a little for that in the office. My brother, my brother is absolutely preposterous. Okay, and and he cracks his own self up, which, and, and you're laughing, and you you hate yourself for it, you know, because it is funny, but you just go. Oh. And and my my boyfriend he just met him for the first time last year when we flew him in for my mom's 80th surprise. And I warned him. I said, okay, you know, my brother's a great dude, but he has this thing. And Carl, at one point, he was rolling his eyes, you know. So about two weeks later, he, he sits down next to me on the couch. He goes, I miss your brother. I go, <laughs> what? And he goes, I do. He goes, you know, I could really use a stupid-ass pun about now. No. <laughs> Sometimes you just want, you, yeah, you need it. There's that was cute. cute. I like that. Um, okay, Miss Millennial. Mm, yes. So... This blew my mind, okay? What you guys are willing to do <laughs> to get out of debt, okay? <laughs> this this uh, online, um, it's, it's a kind of an online banking and budgeting tool kind of thing, Bank Tracker, mybanktracker.com, did a survey, and um, 55% said, it, and they're talking mostly student loan, but they, they referred to all debt, okay? 55% of responding millennials said that they, yes, they would absolutely turn their life into a reality show, no holds bar, be followed, you know, by a camera constantly and let them see whatever they needed to if they could be completely free of debt. Oh, yeah. Well, I, also with the millennials who, like, that's, everyone wants to be known. Everyone wants to be famous. Okay. Yeah. That's the only reason I'm doing this podcast. I'm assuming one day I'm going to walk down the street and they'll be like, oh, from the Great Northern. I recognize you and your puns. But <laughs> And you're happy beaver. <laughs> exactly. Well, what's funny is I think what 
should blow people's minds is how much debt millennials are in because of student loans well that's a whole another it, it is but it gets I better think. okay so that that was the big number 30 mm percent -hmm. said they would sell an organ oh you don't need all of them right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah no 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 i'm glad she's here because yeah, i have no go no i uh, no, i can see that because there are folks that have i mean uh i i, I know several people that you know do some you know do some sort of debt calculator and a lot of them are teachers and nonprofit workers and stuff like that and they're saying in order to have a low debt load you should have like a, an income of like over two hundred thousand dollars right most of these jobs are going to be paying they're nonprofits now a lot of this stuff can be forgiven after 10 years yeah but you're you, you're telling that someone should you know scrape by so that you can you know help someone and you know uh, yeah, and, then, and then you know and then uh, uh you know and then the you know uh, folks in the one percent you know get tax breaks you know up the yin yang yeah no i think maybe a little bit of an investment in uh, education is <laughs> is the way we need to go that it sh you know it, it shouldn't all be profit i mean uh, I friends that are teachers and you know students can't get classes because things have been cut so much mm -hmm. so you need i mean so the so they have all these requirements and then the university cuts things and then they can't, you know, they need eight sections. They only have five. So you've got 120, you know, you've got a bunch of kids that can't graduate because they're waiting and waiting to get their, um, you know, to get their last few classes. Mm -hmm. And so you're sitting, but so they can't go out. They're stuck. They end up with more debt. Mm -hmm. you know, no, educate, you know, I was uh, fairly lucky that, you know, my parents were able, you know, that they, you know, fantasy gifts in sense, you know, landed in their lap. Yeah. Uh, you know, I had to live at home because I was sort of sucked at being a student. My brother and sister were much better than me. But, you know, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I still have a job. I know I, I, a lot of mine. Now, I don't know anyone who has given up an organ. I know a few have damaged their livers, but I don't think <laughs> yeah. that quite counts. That's a yeah, hobby, but, though. Yeah. A lot of my friends, like, that's how they will, like, blood. Really? Giving blood and plasma. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Make a lot of, well enough money that they continue to do it as much as is safely possible. Wow. So the last one though on this, this one is the one that truly freaks me out. The organ thing I could almost, if it was one that you had two of or something mm -hmm. like, and I, I've never, so you can be altru altruistic. That's a hard word for me to say. That is a hard word. And, and you know, get rid of your debt. You know, that's sort of a win-win. Yeah. Except for it's not legal, but no, you know, never mind. Mm -hmm. um, but the other thing is um, 28%. This is disturbing to me said that they would participate in a questionable health study and test a non-FDA approved drug if it oh. meant that they could get out of debt. I lived, I went to school in Moorhead, um, Fargo, basically, Fargo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, there is a, oh, PAX, I think it's called, there's a company there that does medical research. And like every, every single person I knew at the entire college campus essentially would spend weekends doing studies for money like everyone oh my god it was insane yeah i don't think so not <laughs> nope 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 i'll get a second job well yeah i mean and so it might work you know maybe you'd get one where the side effects you turn into like a superhero or something oh, but sure. i have a feel mm -hmm. those are yeah, pretty the, yeah. few and far between haven't found yeah yeah <laughs> no i mean that i just thought that that was pretty eye-popping though i mean the first one's kind of funny because you're right everybody they all want to be famous and they, they you know it's like look i'm eating a scone let's post that you know it's right like, whatever <laughs> um but yeah so um i just thought that was pretty surprising and and sad colleen like you said <laughs> so mm -hmm. nowhere on there was like you know it's become so ubiquitous and so ordinary that it's not even i would do a sex tape for money anymore no, nah, everybody's yeah, no, got one. No, yeah, yeah, I'm kind of yeah. surprised. Yeah. Or yeah. stripping or um I mean that's oh, yeah, I it, would I mean, I would rather keep all my organs and all my blood and you know, you'd sell used underwear on Craigslist or something like that. Did you see season <laughs> three of Orange is the New Black? Yes, I did, oh, actually. God. Yes. That, oh, that that show is so twisted. It's so funny though. I mean, did didn't you just laugh your butt off at some of that stuff with regard to the whole... Oh, and they were trying to mimic the smell. <laughs> That's what got me. Her brother. Her brother. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, that is a great That is a great show. You know, Colleen, you said that, that you're squeamish about watching that because it, it seems mm -hmm. like it would be depressing. But, Megan, they do manage to, like, hit a lot of social issues 
and with with humor somehow, don't mm-hmm. they? They really do. I mean, all I mean, even, I mean, even I mean, I know all those shows do have their humorous element because otherwise it would just be a show about women in prison, and that's not fun or very bleak or very bleak. Or, uh, or the one with Walter uh, Breaking Bad would just be oh. a guy that you know sold drugs and had cancer. So they're neat. I mean, I I get the fact that to make that story where you, the other stuff gets in there. But I, my brain just goes directly to the bad stuff, and then I can't sleep. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I don't. I don't. <laughs> You're so cute. <laughs> you can't. Oh, I, have, I have enough going on in my brain with when regular like, new stuff. Oh, I like this show, but it's kind of funny. It's not really bleak enough. <laughs> 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 if I want my women in prisons, they need either they're like shiving each other or doing it all the time, right? Those are the women in prison movies that you... <laughs> I'm laughing so hard. No Do you ever like go back and find and look for those like 1950s exploitation oh, and okay. 1960s those are the stuff? Best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, guess, I shouldn't what? say that. I did have a family what? member in prison and I don't think any of that happened to her, but... No, no the... Um... A lot of the, a lot of the, a lot of B and C grade movies in the fifties and sixties were like women in prison and stuff. It like was a that. whole genre, genre was women in prison films for guys to get off on. Well, no, no, not even sex. Yeah, I mean, I, I, mean, su- I suppose they're exploitation movies. Mm-hmm. I mean, like a drive-in, like drive-in the, yeah, the theater. Third, yeah, the, yeah, the third movie at the drive-in and oh stuff like God. that. Okay. You know, a lot of mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> just a lot of big-titted actresses. Like, pretty you know, much. like a faster pussycat kill kill, 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 kill double feature with some. <laughs> God, I'm so sheltered. I swear to God, I, 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 it really comes home every Tuesday from eleven to twelve. How little I know about things. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> But are you guys into corn mazes at all? I I, 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 I've driven past them and look. Ooh, it's a corn maze, and that's about it. Okay. Mm-hmm. I don't get it. I don't get why it'd be fun to go running through the corn. I just no, unclear. no. And I've ch- children of the corn. No, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Unless David Bowie is waiting in the middle of this labyrinth. No, I'm good. Not going. <laughs> well, uh, the, you know, they're, they're this time of year, they're pr- prolific, obviously, and they're coming out. Well, there's one, and I, they're amazingly elaborate. I mean, some of them. I have to admit, I, I like the pictures <laughs> the from aerial. above. The aerials are nice. Yeah. But I... <laughs> this guy in Maryland did, um, did uh, Taylor Swift. And <laughs> Taylor Swift, okay? And you know what? He... Uh, Corn maze or a corn maze? <laughs> okay, yeah. okay, okay. Or is Taylor going to get a song out of this? <laughs> she should. She definitely should. I'm just. Oh, sorry. I'm. Just I'm little... sorry because I'm still stuck on their maze. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> you know, started it. I know. Time. I know. See now she can't turn I it off. A she's, she's, she's got a tape running in her head, and it's going to be you know the rest of the show. I know it is. So, um, yeah, so no, but it's, I looked at that thing and it's like, how freaking long did it take to do that? And, and the lady that was being interviewed about it, she's like, yeah, you better take the map because if you don't take the map with you, try to get out of the sucker, like, forget it. I mean, it's, it, but it, it was beautiful and it looks like her. I mean, it's like, it, how do they do that? I can just see calling night help. I'm trapped in Taylor, Taylor Swift. Swift. <laughs> Could happen. Oh, no, you know, they're, they're, they're really sort of fun. Someone just recently, was it around here? Someone did a, some sort of crop art, a mat, like an acre or more of like a Van Gogh piece or a Monet piece. Something. I mean, there's all sorts. I'm like, I, I mean, I suppose if you're artistic and you have a field, you know, but it's, it's certainly a hell of a lot more work than I would put into something. Right. <laughs> sure but that you can only I'm, see from above, above. Too, Yeah, I'm sort know. of... Like, Sort of a lazy fucker sometimes. <laughs> I, I admit that thoroughly. I, <laughs> my kid has, like, I'll have to do something. She's like, it's too much work. And the other day I'm like, oh, my God, I'm thinking it's too much work to do something. Ah, I'm like, oh, my God, I wonder if she gets that from me. <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> That's so funny. Hey, there's some more um, Ashley Madison stuff I just I had to bring in here. So uh, did you hear about all the p- passwords that are out? That got leaked. The, the last thing I took a look at was the fact that the, the how they were making all their robot profiles and the emails about them, which I just thought was fascinating. <laughs> but the, you know, just lots of you know, just the, the internal emails about you know, you're not making enough fake profiles <laughs> fast enough. Oh, you mean within the company within itself? Within the company itself. Oh. And so that's that's the one that 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 I thought was fascinating is that you know they're. 
I'm like, oh my God. So they would take this picture and they would use it this way and then other way. And then now we need to go over here. And, and then the emails over to the Japan because we know we're, we're, we're slacking on our, our, they called them like angels or something. And I'm like, the, in, the internal memos were, were absolutely fascinating on that. They, well, you know, it couldn't happen to a nicer company, but I got tickled. <laughs> I got tickled though when the hackers released a lot of the, the passwords that um, the users had. Mm -hmm. And so I got to read you. There's some, some, that kind of indicate um, one of them is this is wrong. I should okay. not be doing this. These are the passwords. <laughs> um, what the hell am I doing? Uh, these and these are ones used over and over. That that's how they made the list. So they, mm -hmm. um, um, and then then here's a couple of amusing ones. Um, small dick but hard worker. <laughs> <laughs> um, black from the waist down is another one. Oh, but Jesus. then but then here's the just complete stupid ones. Best password ever. <laughs> <laughs> and then. Super hard password. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do like that one. <laughs> That's kind of super hard password. But you know, all, all kidding aside, this made some news. I saw it on a couple of the major cable networks yesterday. But there was a whole article. That the best article to read this on is that it's a tech site. And, and the, the rest of the article, it exposes all these, which he, 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 he. But they really talk about how passwords, the longer the passwords, they're easier to hack now. Oh, interesting. And that you've got to use your upper lower cases and different characters in mm -hmm. there because um, they're getting better and better. Hackers are starting to um, really develop good methods and science for figuring things out. So don't go too long. You want, you want the sweet spot, I think, is between 8 and 12. Hmm. So for the companies I have that I don't like, that I start off with the words, fuck you, it does not work. Okay, I'll have to change <laughs> just, just so you know. <laughs> yeah. I have one of those, too. <laughs> I didn't. I obviously won't tell you my the password. I did make an account, a Gmail account, to make a fake profile on Facebook, and I think the Gmail is um, I hate Facebook so much at gmail dot com. <laughs> really, something like that. That's the tough. cat's out. I guess feel free to email me. Mm. <laughs> do you guys? Do you guys do this? I mean, I I am so frustrated at how many places want your email now and how mm -hmm. much email gets sent. I, I, it's over. I know we've talked about this before, but like Macy's, um, they email me twice a day. I'm like, seriously, how much shit do you think I need? Like, or want even oh, for that I, matter. I, know. I, I, I currently, I had a, I had a, I had a vendor that, you know, did some stuff in our stores and they ignored us for over like 10 years. Mm -hmm. Someone else came in, stole their business because I got better service at a better price and more stuff. And now, from the company I'm no longer using, because I had to send a registered letter and an email and all these sort of things, for some reason now, I'm getting four or five emails a week telling me about these great offers from this company I'm no longer using. Yeah. Now, it's... possibly, had I gotten maybe one of those a week, um, if I had gotten maybe one of those a week before, they wouldn't have lost my business. Right. But it has to be a reasonable amount. I mean, you know, the, the other day, someone at... at, at uh, uh, every company's like, well, do you have our, uh, do you want to, I mean, when you check out, just let me check out as a guest, because if I have to learn one more effing password, I know, I'm going to go insane. And I know, and I know that there's these password companies and I know people that are high, you know, they're really in tech and they're like, you should, you should use this one. So there's just the one thing, but that means that I have to take the over a hundred accounts that I have right. and enter them all in. And I went, so right now it's just easier for me yeah. to like limit the amount I have. I mean, I went through and just got rid of a bunch of stuff. I said, I, I don't use like the cartwheel from Target. I could probably save some money, but I just can't handle another fucking password. I know. Another username, another, I am another account another that needs account. to be within eight to 12 characters yeah. with yeah. capital letters and lower letters and symbols. And, and then it's, I it's gonna, frustrating as hell. Oh my God. It just it, it drives me nuts. Just I let know. me check out as a guest and get the hell out. And the one that drives me the, the craziest is um, trying to buy tickets online because they want you to have an account, yep. but I always forget you need an account. And then so I pick out the damn tickets I want and then I don't remember it. And then I've got to wait for an email. It takes oh, yeah. forever. And then the tickets time out, <laughs> but there's no way to figure out what it is beforehand because you need to get to that point. <laughs> I'm sorry. Ah! <laughs> Just let me buy the effing tickets. <laughs> we had a nerve. Sorry. We did. We did. I feel just go to the box office in this case. I had, there just been times where I'm like, oh, it's, yeah. it's just so much easier. Yeah. I, you know, that just made me think, okay, don't even get me started on airlines, but I do have a flying story here that we're mm -hmm. going to get to in just a second. 
But one of the things, you know how they wanted to, they've all switched over. They, they use hardly any humans for anything anymore at airlines. And I just remember that when um, Northwest was still Northwest, when they were trying to get you to use the kiosks and they literally had one human employee per kiosk. And it's like, well, if you're standing here, why can't you just check my shit in then? You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, why are you going to stand there and watch me do it? Or, you know what I mean? It's just, it's just mind boggling. And then they keep raising price tickets, but, but okay. So well, yeah, there's, there's a, there's a reason I did not go to Spain this summer when I wanted to go for my 50th birthday is because they wanted $1,800 to get to Spain so that I could, you know, and, it, and it, for like, like a 12 hour flight, you know, cause you had to stop like twice so I could sit in a diseased filth ridden tube you know, <laughs> and get motion sick probably, but that's my own deal. And I'm like, no, you don't get my money. Yeah. I just, I just could not do it. I just, I, I, I wanted to, and I'm like, no, I, I did something, you know, uh, you know, I did take a trip, uh, you know, to a different place off, off time. And I'm just like, you know, you've, you know, you've got to, to make it more, you know, there are places that desperately want people, but you just can't get there anymore. Yeah. Or it's, it's so it's, yeah. exhausting, mm -hmm. you know, to do. Uh, speaking of that, are either of you guys afraid of flying? Nah, I don't give a shit. No? No. Mm -hmm. No. I mean, I've never really, my mom used to be just horrifically terrified of flying. And there's a um, former airline pilot turned licensed therapist. His name is Tom Bunn. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and he uh, has, realizes that there's a correlation between good and a lot of sex and diminishing the fear of flying and there's actual science to it but um and you can you can look this up the article's fascinating um and this was on this was not on huffington post this was actually like on nbc's site okay so you, you got to <laughs> check this out but tom bun and um it explains about the oxytocin and you know if you have enough of that released in the hours prior to flying that um, you are more likely to be calm. But they did discover, and this is very complicated, you gotta read the article, but there are people that, there's a process that your brain goes through called consolidation, and the people that are afraid of flying generally are so because they had one experience that they hyper consolidated super quickly, left a huge imprint, and trying to get those out, I guess, is just a bugger. Yeah, I can imagine. Does that make sense? Yeah. Did I well, explain it? Yeah, yeah. 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 I don't think it needs to be. I mean, in theory, the idea of flying is terrifying and ridiculous. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I, um, or the yeah, I don't, I don't think the fear of flying is is anything that unusual because that doesn't. I was like, that's not what humans do. Well, that mm -hmm. makes no sense. <laughs> right. No, but I mean, you know, it's, it's funny, though, that, that they are working with this. But he said, you know, everybody just good policy. If you're going to fly, bang your brains out the night before or if, within a few hours, and you should be real good. I like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. Me too. That is good. Yeah. yeah. My guy will like that a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm just saying. Yeah, so, hey, we going on another trip? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go I fly have, I have no trips planned right now <laughs> because my daughter no longer wants to travel with me. Because, oh, you she's know, going through a phase. Yeah, yeah, she's going through a phase that time. So I'm trying to decide what I want to do. And I'm like, oh, so I was, you know, I was thinking, you know, I'm Italian, so I was thinking maybe Sicily. But, you know, because I've always wanted to go there. Yeah. But it's 18 hours, and I'm like, Oh. I don't, if I'm going to do 18 hours to get one way to get one place, cause you have to stop so many times, I need to be gone for longer than a week. And that just puts a lot of work on my mom. And I just, I'm not oh, sure yeah. I want to, I'm not sure I want to do that. And it, we, during school and you know, I'm like, Duh. and I'm like, I'm like, well, maybe, maybe spring, you know, maybe twin spring training. I love, I love, it's so much fun. If no, if folks haven't done that. Going down to Fort Myers and watching spring training games is spectacular. Really? We were down there. Oh, yeah, because it's all laid back. It's smaller. The, it's sort of um, the, the size of the field sort of like CHS, you oh. know, over here. And it's, you're, you're watching these kids that are just excited that they're almost to the big leagues. I mean, yeah. we got to watch like Kenny Vargas, Kenny's Vargas. Yeah. And just, I mean, just, just nail these damn, you know, home runs. And we're like, I think they're still going. Uh, you know, you're watching some of the older guys that are trying to make a comeback or, you know, regain their spot on the squad, but it's still sort of, re you know, relaxed and everyone's kicked back and it doesn't, and it just, it's, and it's like 
warm because it's Florida. Yeah. <laughs> it's Florida in March versus, you know, it really, August. you know, and, uh, you know, and it's, it's nice in four months. There's, you know, there's beaches and if you like science, there's like Thomas Edison's house. Oh, there's fun. stuff. Okay. And you know, and it's just nice. Are you a big baseball fan? I'm a medium baseball fan. Okay. I mean, I, this is the first year I didn't buy tickets. I normally do like one game a month and stuff like that. Okay. But I found that lately, you know, trying to organize a teenage schedule, my schedule, and then it'd be a thousand degrees or it's raining or this or that. So we would just pick up tickets here and there. Okay. You know, especially since the team sucks. Yeah. There's plenty of seats. Yeah. I mean, I don't want, you know, it's, I, I don't revel in that, but it's just, you know, how it is. Yeah. Mm. I can't make season commitments. Mm-hmm. I just can't because obviously the second I do, anytime I've ever done a season ticket thing, some, st- something always came up, especially football and it drove me nuts. And then you don't, I don't need to buy something for fun that ends up being a guilt thing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like, no, like you, you know what I'm talking to about. Go. Yeah. I've done that with Guthrie tickets or, or, th- or, or, or the, or the other, um, you know, the, the other theater, you know, group in the area, stuff like that. I, I, or, you know, orchestra hall. I just found that if I, if, if I commit too far out, the amount of times that I completely space the event or conflict comes up yeah. seem to be like 70% of the time. Think, and I'm I just swear. like, and I just don't know how folks do that because I just, you know, I mean, I can do, I can sit on my ass for weekend after weekend after weekend. And then somehow one night or the, the night I'm supposed to do something, I completely space something. Sure. And I'm like, uh, just the way my brain works. Yeah. I mean, not that I don't like these things. But uh, I know it's, it's hard. I, I think that they're going to have to start marketing differently. I really do. I mean, and the, and they do that with the partial season stuff and the, you know, whatever. But I just, I, I, I hear this from so many people that I have a feeling there's going to be some sort of a sea change with regard to that stuff. I think it's coming guys. I have to bring this up. I got, I was up too late and, um, got into, and I don't really normally go on ask Reddit, but there was a, a thread about strippers telling stories and, you know, these are some funny stories. So go look mm-hmm. for the best stripper stories on there. But I just pulled a couple that mm-hmm. I thought were pretty funny. So this one gal had um, this regular customer. And this is where the fetish people started to emerge. But this chick wouldn't want lap dances. All he wanted to do was pay her exactly what he would have to pay for a lap dance and tip her very well to look for lint between her toes. <laughs> <laughs> so, then, so then she used to put it there for him. She used to like plant lint. <laughs> so okay. that's customer service. Well, yeah. I'm thinking. So my, my thing is with this is first of all, when you want lint, where do you get it? It's always there <laughs> when you don't want it. We're but right. damn it, when you need it, how, how the you... fuck do you find lint? That's what Harvest. I want to know. <laughs> right? Yeah. I don't, I, yeah, that's a good question. See, I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying. Really Maybe one of me. those college students in debt were, we're selling, selling off the lint. lint. There you go. To the strippers <laughs> and fetishists out there. <laughs> oh, Colleen, you are so funny when you get tickled. You crack me up. Ah. So um, I just, two things before we got to wrap up here. Um, <laughs> Um, I would like to preview the fact that um, we are going to have erotic photographers, rice and beans back. And um, we, um, you know, we, we just had bad sound. When, yeah, so, when we had sounds them. like oonts, oonts, oonts. Yeah, and they are such <laughs> cool well, nothing people, like. yeah. you know, with an interesting mm-hmm. story. So we're going we're gonna to feature them. And these guys, just so you know, are um, they're erotic photographers. Um, uh, Rice is the, the wife and she is the stylist. She, so she's really sets things up and beans is the husband and he, um, he's the, he does most of the shooting and, um, they, they're just neat and they're also, uh, lifestyle people. So they're swingers. Um, so they just, they just manage to have so much fun with everything they do. (laughs) <laughs> so we're going to get them back in. And then I um, am in communication. I, I CC'd you on the email. Mm-hmm. We are going to have a transgender lady mm-hmm. come in um, who uh, is really funny. Uh, my um, dear, dear friends um, who happen to be um, a male gay married couple, um, he, the, uh, she goes to their church. Mm-hmm. And they got to talking about this, and she wanted to come in and, and um, offer a perspective. So I thought that would be really interesting. And what was so funny is when we were gathering contact information and everything else, the two, um, my, my two friends, the married guys, 
um, they went into this thing because one of them's 60 and the other one's 50. And the 60 year old was like, God, you know, I remember when we were just outrageous. I mean, we were gay and now we're like freaking conventional married people. I, I, I do have, and I haven't noticed it too much for my lesbian friends, but I have noticed uh, several of my uh, male gay friends that are like, we're so ordinary now. I mean, I right. grew up being exotic and now they're ordinary. I know. And they just sometimes want to go back to, you know, they're just, they were used to being exotic. But, you know, but I know that there are still folks of even an earlier generation that are still hidden because they'll never yep. be able to come out. Yep. And so... And, you know, and once they, you know, once they have, you know, the statement, it's always followed by, but I would rather be, you know, ordinary than in a closet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, that's a good yeah, change. Yeah. I would it's say. a good change, but it, it is something because it was, it's been, there's always a tipping point for something. And there's yeah. been such an abrupt change in the past 20 years that, I mean, uh, even my friends in their forties and fifties, when they were in high school, were just oh, you know, horribly closeted or, or bullied or just feeling really horrible about themselves. It, but and and t and they know that it's better for the younger generation, right. and they're thrilled about that. But but they dealt with it by being larger than life. Sometimes, so like yeah. you know, mm -hmm. you know, and 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 that and that, and that large defensive it, 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 front, yeah, yeah. kind of. And it, you know, and I, I'm probably using the wrong vocabulary, but I'm I'm pretty sure people can figure out what you know where mm -hmm. I'm going. Right, you know, going here. That's part of age, though. I think. Yeah, I it, mean. Yeah. I feel ordinary now. I mean, even just like I no longer wear my plaid pants and and camo jacket and mohawk <laughs> you know what i mean i think you kind of yeah i ran across the... yeah i ran across a picture of me or someone else posted it and i ran across a picture of me when i was 25 with the long yeah, hair the long hair and i'm looking at this and i'm like if my hair looked like that every goddamn day i wouldn't have short hair now and i just and i i look at this picture and i'm like I am absolutely fucking gorgeous in the picture, and I'll just say it. You were, and then I'm sitting there, and I'm looking at this, and I'm like, "But I didn't know it then." Isn't that stupid? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's but tragic. Then it, really, then it occurs to me that I would have been freaking unbearable. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, because if you had known, if, you if I had known that I looked the way that I, did. if you knew how smoking hot you were, <laughs> you would have been unbearable. Real, yeah, <laughs> and I'm saying, I probably would have been just. I, I, I may have been an asshole. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> you know, and I'm, you know, and it, it occurs to me, and I know there are a lot of people out there. There's some people who are just, that were just more out there. I mean, I had plenty of fun in my 20s, but I don't think I'm carrying a lot of baggage from it. And other people have a lot of baggage. But I live, you know, I, I, I don't think I come up in a lot of, you know, a lot of rumor mills. You know what I mean? Right. Whereas I think people that were more out there or more open, you know, it just, it was, I'm like, I, I think, and I'm like, oh, wow. So when I'm 75 and I look back when I'm 50, I'm always going to wonder, well, what didn't I, what don't I know now? That is a really interesting point. <laughs> what am I going to figure out in the really next 25 years yeah. that, I, that I don't know or don't understand about myself now? And how much time have we wasted under false impressions of our own selves? And how many limitations have we put on ourselves because of a feeling a certain way that may or may not be right? And, you know, because, I mean, so much has changed in how people, uh, you know, I mean, it, women aren't putting up with cat calling and guy and, and guys don't want to be called. They're like, no, I don't babysit my kids. I parent them. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. So things change a lot. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, and, and things just to some extent change faster as we go along. So I'm, I'm maybe damn curious what the world looks like when I'm 75. Yeah. And well, one thing, I mean, I think we all have witnessed this with people that we know that are in that, you know, age group and beyond or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And especially with women, you know, they get to a certain point where they just, they don't care anymore. And they, they love how liberating that feels. You know, mm -hmm. I've, I've heard that time and time again and seen it, haven't you guys? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, the grandmas who are like, honey, I've been, you know, the, when we used to be at the bridal shows and have and have a booth. And, you know, mom and daughter might be, you know, um, embarrassing. Grandma's like, what, you don't think I know what this is? You know, <laughs> <laughs> grandma knows, you know, I mean, I talked about it, but, you know, but. And your uh, grandpa loves a good cop. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's, it, you know, so it's just going to, you know, change. And, you know, that stuff, that stuff is good. Yeah. Not, you know, not hiding is good. Mm -hmm. Well, what a warm fuzzy. We lent to warm fuzzies. <laughs> so we'll wrap it up on that. What do you guys think? Sounds so, great. What a great week. And we'll be back next week and more fun and interesting guests coming, coming around. Check us out on Facebook at Great Northern Sexcast.